All right, Julia. Hello. How are you, Julia? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Julia, are you from the UK? I am indeed. I'm from London. There you go. So what's on your mind, ma'am? Nothing much. I was just wondering, what is your stance on reparations? Um, yes, we're campaigning very hard for reparations for foundational Black Americans here in the United States. Um, how do you feel about reparations? I do not support it. Okay. Um, you don't support reparations for Black people in America? No, I feel as though the ones that were enslaved, brutally enslaved, um, do not deserve reparations because in the time that we are in, modern day, they aren't the victims of what was inflicted upon them. Yes, their families, their ancestors did, you know, go through torment and agony, but it's not, it wasn't inflicted upon them. So I think now in this time of day, they have chances and they have, you know, many, many things going for them that and they just essentially don't need reparations so should um these governments and the western governments stop giving reparation type payments to the descendants of jewish holocaust victims too right based on your logic yes based off my okay. logic okay so why are you not making a case for that then why are you making a case for foundational black americans and you're not going against the reparations that's being paid to Jewish descendants now. You, you're not making a case on that nowhere. You're not in their spaces saying what they Cause, should Because I adore the Jews, and the Jews have been there for me. Okay, so, so it's a racially-based policy. The policy should be implemented based on race. Yes. Um, no, that's not going to work, man. We're not playing that game. That's called white supremacy. And white supremacy is unjust, ma'am. This is why we need reparations, because of unjust white supremacist policies, right? Understandably so. But I also feel right. like, yes, whilst white supremacy is wrong, and it's unfortunate for people to have more privileges than others, I think mm -hmm. it's the way the world is. The world is cruel. Some people have to get the short end of the no, stick. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> and, no, we don't. And, and if no, that is the FBA's... Then no, so that's no, no, that white supremacy talk. Nope, you don't. You can have a just world. The world is not evil. The white supremacists are evil. The universe is a very just um, entity. It's not cruel. It's not evil. The people can make choices to do the right thing or do the evil thing. You can choose to produce justice. Black people, we are very, oh, we've always been a just people. You can have integrity. You don't have to be a damn degenerate. There's too many resources on this planet to mistreat people based on race and ego, because that's an ego thing. So that white supremacist mindset of the world is evil, that's that satanic white supremacist filthy mindset that has to go. That's been a cancer on this planet. And... We have to replace the system of white supremacy with a system of justice, right? Isn't justice better? Justice is better, but unfortunately, justice doesn't always happen. People don't always experience justice in any field. And I also feel as though you were talking about how the blacks, you know, they the world is an unjust place, of course, and they get the short end of the stick. But also... Yeah, it is a cruel world, and there are blacks perpetuating ghetto culture and perpetuating gun violence and perpetuating gangs and crimes. I think the but, most, but, statistically the but, most. But, but ma'am, you can't point your finger at black people being criminals, and you are a supporter of white supremacy, and that's the biggest criminal gang in recorded history, right? I don't think so. I think, yeah, like, I, I don't think of myself as a white supremacist. But ma'am, it, it's safe to suspect that you are a white supremacist because you've sat here and you made excuses for white supremacy saying, well, that's just the way the world is. No, it's not, ma'am. White supremacy is the most unnatural thing ever created. So that's I don't think so. I think there's more unnatural things than to dislike a certain group of people oh, and no, to work against them. Supremacy is not about just disliking. It's dominating, controlling, and mistreating people by force. Right, so it's not, so. 
it's not that's not right you think it's right to mistreat people by force just because they were born the wrong color in your mind no but i think if environmentally and mentally and in the environments that they were born in um them being around let's be honest here most of them are in the ghetto they're around violence and most of them because that's all they know it's a thing versus you know nature versus nurture that's all they know so they continuously perpetuate it and i but, think going from that stance, but ma'am, but ma'am, yes, it ma'am. is good to work against them no ma'am well, you, black people who don't live in the ghetto you still uh, practice white supremacy against them ma'am so the ghettos are created by the white supremacists your community creates the ghettos ma'am that's a creation of you so why do you create ghettos, ma'am? And then complain about the ghettos you created? I don't necessarily think, okay, well, we may have created ghettos, if that's what you call it, but you guys are the ones to still accept it and to not try well, to escape that lifestyle. No, we, no, 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 ma'am. We don't accept it. This is why we're calling out the problem, which is you and your kind, the white supremacists, ma'am. That's why we're fighting against that. Who's fighting against that? me and other black people who think like me we're fighting against systematic white supremacy and against the odds you and the people that you fight against Mm -hmm. i still think that if we're looking statistically and at the just the facts i think the ghettos and the other blacks that do perpetuate that are have a high percentage of it so i think you guys working against that doesn't really do much yes it's like you guys want change and you guys want things to get better for your people but if we look at the statistics and the percentages most of the people you are saying are the problem are your own people causing it and they're the ones doing it the most but ma'am what are they doing that the white supremacists didn't orchestrate everything i think think they're doing such as killing their own blood such as okay. leaving their wives, leaving their kids. The only people who do that are people in extremely economically deprived areas, middle class and well-to-do black people. They don't kill each other, ma'am. And what are the races that are in those deprived areas? Um, there are a lot of black people in those deprived economic areas. Exactly. So mm-hmm. they still do. They still do cause it. It's a this thing of like either fighting against it or accepting it, and most of your people accept it. That's but, why. But most, ma- that's but, why. But I think ma'am. Really but ma'am. It, we learned it from changed. you. But ma'am, we learned it from the best. You. We yeah, but you can't always it. say you. You can't always victimize yourself in the situation and be like we've learned it from you. You did. Um, and just we accept by the, being the victim in the situation. But how you, long... you've accepted being the victimizer. So yeah, we are the victims. We are the victims. That's, We're the victimizers. That's the like victim. that's like no, that's like drug addicts. Just you know, drugs are given to them. Drugs are produced right. by people by the rich, right? But they're the ones who keep on like sticking the needle inside of them. They're the ones who keep right. on being addicted and, to it. And, it's at their own detriment. And they punish people who sell drugs to folks who overdose. See, they say that the drug dealers are responsible too. In many cases, if you sold somebody the fentanyl that they overdosed on, you're just as culpable, ma'am. And just like the white supremacists, they're culpable for the situations and the environments that they created for black people to not thrive. So it's you, the white supremacist, ma'am. That's why we're looking at you as the problem, right? And what, can you please break down in what sectors we are the problem? Every single and sector. I'm not, a, I'm not a white supremacist. I I'm suspect just speaking my own opinion. Ma'am, so. I sus- based on what you're saying, I suspect that you could be a white supremacist, ma'am. I'm not, though. You said until, could, but that's not a Until proven matter. otherwise. And you haven't proven that you're not a white supremacist because you're spewing a lot of the white supremacist talking points. But, ma'am, there's nine areas of activity between human beings, and the white supremacists dominate every nine area of those activities, ma'am. Name something that the white supremacists don't control or dominate. Name one thing. I don't. I don't really think the white supremacists control much. I think the we what again. Don't they uh, listen, hate crime. Hate crime is a thing. Ma'am, white supremacy I, ma'am, is, ma'am, you, you're you're deflecting, ma'am, because you can't even name anything that your community, the white supremacists, that they I'm don't not control. Sure white what don't they control, ma'am? 
to be fair, I don't it's think you, like I said, right. I don't listen. I think you're confusing. Right. Words. And you, you right. And you can't you can't name and it. Anything. No, listen, therefore, I think it's confusing. Therefore, if you control everything, which basically you've acknowledged by your silence, you're responsible for what you control. If we're controlled by you, you're responsible, just like a ship. The captain is always responsible for whatever goes on on that ship. And the white supremacists are the captains of the ship. And they've gotten everything jumbled the hell up. So they're the ones to blame for anything negative within black society globally. They're the blame for it. But do you not blame your own people for perpetuating that? Like you said, thing, numerous no, amount of times. No, because if it weren't for the white supremacists, they wouldn't perpetuate it, ma'am. So the white supremacists, they're the problem. Yeah, but that's a moronic excuse because if you really that's wanted to, truth. and if you all work together. Because we do. Turn. Because we every time we stop the criminality and the degradation in our community, the white supremacists undermine us. Anytime we have any kind of black progress, the white supremacy uses the, the white supremacist, they use their force to undermine us and knock us back down. So they are the problem 100%. We can get ourselves up out of negative situations overnight, but we're kicked back in those situations by the white supremacists. Whenever we build communities that are prosperous, the white supremacists go out of their way to undermine them. And we've done this over and over again. Whenever we find some level of success collectively, the white supremacists will knock it back down. So they are the problem. Your white supremacist community, that's the problem, ma'am. So you just continuously victimize all, all Because you're groups. victimizers. Because you are victimizers. As long well, as you think... victimize us, we're going to act like victims and say, hey, we need to get these people off of us to stop victimizing us. Yes, we're victims. I'm a victim of white supremacy, ma'am. I feel like that's very counterproductive because you don't if you don't take pragmatic ways of just going about it and if you don't actually take action and you just accept people are continuously victimizing you. Ma'am, like you're not gonna get anywhere. Why, that's, that's why, why you're still not that's why no no. That's why we have to we don't look at the victimizers enough. Because, see, we start thinking that we caused a lot of the stuff that happened and it's just bad luck. No, it's the white supremacists orchestrating that. And enough of us don't look at it like that. But when we do, we actually start doing better because we know what the problem is. Just like military. You're never going to win a war unless you know what's going on in the war. And we're looking at the people perpetuating the victimizing. And that's the white supremacists. And if we focus on that, we'll solve the problem of white supremacy and produce justice, right? Hypothetically, if they are the ones causing it all, white supremacists, and if they are the ones pulling the strings whilst you all remain as puppets, what are you going to do to actually stop it all? Rather than just talking, what are the actions you would take for the majority of your people so they can prosper and actually escape the stereotypes that are bestowed upon them? But here's the thing with black folks, and we don't discuss military strategies or societal strategies or, or um, social study strategies with the open enemy. We don't discuss that. But I will say that black people, we have to get into the mindset of running our societies um, in a collective manner that's going to be productive. Because here's the thing. You suspected white supremacists, you guys are going to kind of wither off on your own anyway, because your your numbers are already low. So the white supremacists are already kind of being wiped out by nature. Over there in Europe, your numbers are very low. Over here, the numbers are low and you have a zero birth rate. And you know that, especially you white women over there in Europe. Y'all have to get artificial uteruses and all of that stuff. Y'all not having babies like you're supposed to because a lot of you can't. So your numbers are really, really looking dire at this point. So you're not going to be around too much longer, the white supremacists, because you guys segregate yourselves off into these little um, enclaves, these little all white supremacist enclaves, and then you, uh, you start mating with each other, and that creates a lot of neurological diseases, which speeds up um, that birth rate decline. 
So you guys are not really going to be around too, too much longer. And that I, I say, unfortunately, because y'all take a lot of other good white people with you with your bullshit. So we're just trying to get black folks into the mindset of running a society on our own. So we want to get us into that mindset. So we're going to be fine. Um, I think we would be more advanced if it weren't for the white supremacists holding us back so much. So we're going to be fine. We're just focusing on creating communities that will be self-contained when the white supremacists won't be able to dominate us anymore. So that's our biggest concern. Yeah, but wouldn't that still be segregating and wouldn't that still lead to conflict if you just want to build communities with your own people rather than try to infiltrate other communities? and maybe do it from that standpoint because I feel as though, yeah, that's still segregation. I still as though that will be very counterproductive in the long run. That's and not segregation. No no, uh, yes, that, it is because you weird. want to stay with the blacks. You're just saying our communities, we will build it up from the ground up. But it's a default situation. I mean, it's not that we just want to be with the blacks. We're with the other blacks by default because the white supremacists segregated themselves and they've drained all the resources for themselves. So in order for us to accumulate resources, we have to be codified to do business with each other in order to sustain and help each other. This is why foundational black Americans, we've been the most successful black people globally because we've been codified enough to understand the importance of needing each other and building with each other. This is why your your community of white supremacists are always coming among us, trying to divide and conquer and infiltrate us with all of these different movements. So the fact that there are so many resources used to undermine us shows the threat. Anytime we build a community, the white supremacist city planners will go and try to put a freeway or a train station or a subway right in the middle of a black community. Whenever we try to build something up or we build a prosperous, self-contained black area or business district, your community, they go up and put bombs in there and blow it up like they did Tulsa. They'll go shoot it up like they did Wilmington. So we're the only group that has had this complete sabotage over and over and over of black progress even with the FBI, the the highest intelligence agency in the country, they had a whole program called COINTELPRO designed to keep black people from rising up ep- economically. They were infiltrating every single black organization, having people burn down buildings and assassinate people. So the fact that your community goes through all that effort to undermine us, ma'am, they are the problem, Right. Yes, but like I said before, you guys have been fighting for a long time now. And Mm -hmm. whilst you guys are accepted in society and a lot has changed since slavery and those times of torment, I feel as though if you guys went about it a certain way, a more pragmatic way, I feel like if you went through it, I think if you went forward in a certain way, it would change a lot of things and like not what? much, not much changes happen. So I think that really okay, shows I keep asking you what? Okay. Okay. You, you're, you're just talking in vagaries. Go about it. What go about what and what goal and what, what should we do? I feel like maybe, maybe follow the white people, follow their behavior, follow the way they carry themselves rather than try to ostracize yourself from society by alienating yourself and being abnormal, I think. Follow white people and to do what? What do you do? Explain what you do that we need to follow. Not follow white people. I think follow the ways, the way they carry themselves. Whilst you also have your okay. own qualities, okay. things what? that define yourselves differently. Okay, what qualities of white society that's unique that's that are unique to white society that we need to follow? Let me know. Let's name them. I think elegance, decorum. You know, elegance. Yeah, I think decorum. Ma'am, I think ma'am, carrying yourself, ma'am. I think it's just Ma'am. there's just something about it in the end that I just can't explain. Ele- what elegance? Mean. Yes, Ele- I think elegance. Ma'am. But I think decorum is more of a more of a rightful description, I think. Ma'am, there's trailer parks by the millions of people from your community. Is that what that's the elegance you're talking about? 
but that's a small demographic of my people. I think the majority of black people just like let's look example, where does like twerking come from? Where does all this, you know, being promiscuous and showing your naked body come from? Your it community. doesn't come from the white people. Yeah, it does, ma'am. Ma'am, you the Greco Roman society, you guys were freaks over there in Europe. What are you talking about, ma'am? Yeah, but I still feel as though we did it with ma'am, some type no. of elegance. Ma'am, yeah, but listen, ma'am, elegance. We, ma'am, we, Tariq, listen, ma'am, we elegance. are in a different society now. We are not in the ma'am. Time. We are in a you, the, the Greco, now. ma'am, y'all were having that. sex with animals. What, what, what are you talking about? That's a small doing demographic that? people. Black ma'am, people, ma'am, black no, no, people no, 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 on the dark web of you white women, especially from the UK, bone and horses, dogs, and piglets. Is that the elegance you're talking about, ma'am? Because we what ain't on none of them sites. We're, we're not on them damn animal porn sites. Listen, you're talking about a small group of people oh, that happen no, to be no, white. The majority it, of people who are ma'am, black ma'am, are promiscuous. Ma- oh, no, 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 no. Tell us more about this elegant man. Family. There's porn sites by the thousands of these white women, especially over there in the UK, where she's from. Bone and horses, goats, turkeys, pit bulls, ostriches. They're boning everything. Is this the elegance you're talking about, ma'am? Tariq, you need a... Ma'am, just tell me more about the elegance. And then that, I won't even get on the meth epidemic. Uh, do you smoke meth elegantly, ma'am? Is that what we need to emulate? Your meth smoking? Absolutely not. Meth okay, so not what are you talking about the smoke. elegance, ma'am? There's a meth Listen, epidemic. I'm saying the way they commun- carry themselves. With they meth carry themselves pipes? With certain type of classiness that with just meth a lot pipes. of black people can't exude. And that's just a fact. Are you talk- and you bring- cla- classiness or glassiness? The glass meth pipe. Because there's a lot of meth pipes in your community. Not all white people. I'm not trying to denigrate all white people. But there's an epidemic in the white community of crystal meth use. Is that the elegance Black you're talking about? Black people are using meth, too. I don't know why no, you keep on ma'am, making these ma'am, points ma'am, like every single ma'am, person ma'am, in each we different don't race. Do meth is something that we do not do. It's so rare for a Black person to use some meth. We don't do no damn meth. Okay, do you That's think, so do, wait, can, Tariq, can I ask you a question? Is meth expensive ma'am, or is it cheap? Is, there, ma'am, is it an expensive we, or cheap ma'am, drug? Ma'am, we don't do meth as black people. We do weed. We don't do no damn meth. Because weed's cheap. You guys can't do meth. You guys can't do coke. Ma'am, we good. <laughs> good. Good. And, we don't want to. Good. Y'all keep it. Because we, we don't want we, to do what you do. Over. You're bringing up these small cases that happen don't, in every single race and bringing it up like it's a good. Oh, no, no, no. no. So you don't make trillions of dollars in the drug trade for small cases. The meth industry is the damn trillion dollar industry. The heroin and all of the drugs that your community use, that, that generates trillions of dollars. It's not a small time operation, ma'am. Is that the elegance you're trying to tell us about, ma'am? And do you guys not do the same thing with weed? We, yeah, weed is all right. Yeah, weed is better than meth. Yeah, I'm At not saying, I'm not better. trying to justify drug use. I'm just saying in every race. There but you're talking about all of this drugs. elegance, ma'am. But I'm trying yeah, to, I'm but trying to understand the elegance. I'm, it, I'm listen, tr- I'm trying to explain. Ma'am, I'm trying to understand this elegance you're talking about with the meth and the, the bestiality and all of this. Where the, the trailer parks, the, where's this elegance you're talking about, ma'am? Listen, Tariq, okay? Listen. I'm you're the one who brought up meth firstly, as the black man here rather than the white woman. And listen, um you brought up meth whilst I was talking about elegance and I'm saying that it's a certain type of ambience that I've only seen white people being able to uphold. You see black people being ratchet, being in the ghetto, you know, talking about like intercourse and just giving like doing drugs and like selling all getting all this illegal money but your people buy that most of the rap records are bought by your community ma'am when you look at the coachellas and all of these rap concerts most of these are your people going to see and listen to that 
if you look at the rap music industry, your people run the rap music industry and they control what's released to the public. Our good brother Meek Mill just said he gets more money to rap about ratchet stuff by the white execs. So why does your community own these record labels who put out this derogatory stuff about black people? And why are these white audiences consuming it so much? Why do y'all like black degradation so much? Listen, I think it's the case where a lot of people just want to live vicariously through the lives of other people, right. especially when that life is continuously being, you know, thrown in their face. They see these videos of, you know, black culture being perpetuated. And I think a lot of white people, they just right. happen to just want to vibe with it sometimes to see how other people. Because that makes you feel better as because, a white person because you're insecure. Perhaps, right? but we may be the ones watching it and listening to it, but you guys are the ones doing it. You guys are the ones doing the shit that they rap about, I think. And there are black people who are doing, and no ma'am, and and there's black people who's doing progressive stuff, but you don't put a billion dollar budget on that. There's white people doing meth, boning animals, and doing all types of derogatory things, and there is no billion dollar budget for it. So you're not at liberty to point fingers. We only have our underbelly promote it on a national level every group has an underbelly we are the only ones whose underbelly is promoted with billion dollar budgets so that's your community promoting that ma'am Tyreek, we live in a world that the things that are lucrative happen to be happen to be of detriment to others and i think instead of bringing up these cases these cases that do happen every day you just need to realize that you you're coming from the standpoint of generalizing it and every that happens in every field the things that are most lucrative happen to be cruel to others happen to make others lives better whilst making other people's lives worse that's so white the way things mind, are that's a white supremacist mindset no it doesn't it's not Tariq. No. it's the world that we live in i think no that's just... the, the the white supremacist world that's a white supremacist mindset mm. No, uh, I think ma'am, when, when, ma'am, when you're over there in Europe, are, where, are you here? You sound like you're in the United States now, or, or are you still in the UK? <laughs> I'm still in the UK. <laughs> right. Ma'am. I'm sorry, my voice just happens to adapt to other people's. It's a bit weird, but I'm from London. Yes, I right. am. Right. I mean, ma'am, London and the UK, it's full of little white ghettos. Those little areas over there are very raggedy. You guys know <laughs> And Lee over there, you guys over there living in them little bitty ass apartments, um, eating goddamn oatmeal and crumpets, <laughs> and you're not bawling out the way you're supposed to. And many of you are drugged out over there too, so you're not at liberty to point fingers at anybody, ma'am. You're not really bawling out over there. And shout out to my black brothers and sisters over there in the UK <laughs> because they bring the flavor to the UK. When I go Box. there, I eat your food. I have to go to my Caribbean brothers and sisters to eat the food. It's horrible there. So you don't really have a culture. Tariq, the only thing the black people add to this place is shuffing people up. I think you're talking about the, you know, the white areas being somehow being ghetto, but most of the areas here that have high crime rates and that happen to also be ghetto or to be in a deprived area, it's filled with black people inflicting harm on others, stealing from the shops, committing crimes stabbing people up because they said something that happened to upset them that day and when you look at knife crime most of the people that do it are people of color or black people especially wow. black men i was mm-hmm. at a park one day i was at hyde park i was strolling hyde park is a very you know beautiful park it's a known park here and there was just a group of black people in the corner and all of a sudden they saw what you guys call an up. And they started chasing him. They just pulled a summer. They just pulled a katana out of his pants. One pulled out a machete. One pulled out a knife. And they just all went heading for someone that was there up. And it was one guy. So it is also pussy. Ma'am. Okay. So we're going to talk about knifing. The UK, the, the royal family, and the UK government, the English government, they went all over the world pulling out their bayonets, knives, and guns, colonizing people, particularly the West African people. So you guys colonized and stuck up whole countries, stole all the artifacts. I've been to the museums over there. You got all of the artifacts and some of the, the, the precious 
entities from some of these African countries in your museums that you stole and the people are trying to get them back. You got all of the resources and the gold and the diamond, the De Beers and all of those people. Y'all set up shop over there where you pillaged African countries. Man, we're not going to even get to the stealing. You guys take stealing on a whole different level. So, if yeah, there's some brothers and sisters from the continent of Africa who go to the UK and put a blade on somebody's ass. Well, that's just karma. But Tariq, with that analogy, with that comparison, right, I think the difference between those two things, you comparing the royal family stealing all these artifacts, inflicting harm in other countries, colonizing, and these ghetto places where these people can continuously um, perpetuate, like perpetuate all that they have been through and inflict that on other people. I think the difference between that is one is for meaning and the other is just for their own gain. I think those are two different things for their own personal gain. And Ma'am, you think the UK government and the royal family and the UK army, they weren't pillaging all of these countries around the world for their own gain? Britain colonized half the damn world. They went around the world colonizing everybody, even us the over here. as well. Okay. And, and, and let me be real. The, the wealth of Britain was really built off the backs of foundational black Americans, because we were over here colonized by Britain and then the white supremacists here broke off from them, but they still had a little deal going on. So a lot of that wealth was gener generated from the slave trade in the Caribbean islands as well. So they made their bones and they made their money um, demeaning people and exploiting people and stealing and hoarding the stolen wealth, ma'am. So that whole society over there is built off of that. So you can't really point the finger, ma'am. And they did it for their own gain. Listen, Tariq, you're still victimizing yourself. And with the, you know, having a constant, you know, just victim mindset, mm -hmm. you know, the thing is, you're not going to get much done because the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to get paid from the wrong people, the same people who exploit you, who you claim to exploit you. Um, who continues, who add to the ghetto culture, who try to make things worse than it has to be for black people. I don't, I, um, I don't, don't understand it, your point it, of always it, saying they're the ones causing this, but yet man, just taking it constantly. You, you let them okay, take it. Man. Well, here's the problem, this whole thing making it worse. And that's the great thing because you guys, the white supremacists, you've done so much degradation to us. It can't get any worse. So we can only go up. You can't threaten us anymore with, oh, it's going to get worse. You've done everything imaginable to us, and we survived it. And that's the thing that throws you off, and that's why Foundation of Black American Culture in particular is so respected around the world, and people try to emulate us. Because if we can survive that, those are a group of people. We want some of what they got. We want that spirit. You go to the UK, they're over there acting like us. The white people are acting like us. The music that we listen to, they love our music. They love everything, our swag over there because they know what it is. They know real godly people when they see it. So foundational black American culture is something that everybody wants to try to taste a piece of because we're that mysterious group where you're trying to figure out how did they survive everything we threw at them. These people didn't break. They didn't falter. They got a little dirt on them and they're still kicking and ticking. And people can't do nothing but respect that and appreciate that. Even you, ma'am. Because that's why you're calling. You respect it. You appreciate it. This is why you're trying to use your Jedi mind tricks, right? So now you're just letting the whites yet again colonize and take what you guys adore. Take the music you adore. Take the appeal you guys have to offer. Take how you are as a whole. Is that what you are saying? Well, you can appreciate what we do. Everybody yeah. around the world appreciates what we do. And but let me ask you this. And how, how old are you? You're 20, are you in your 20s or 30s? I'm I'm 19. Okay, you're very young. Let yes. me ask you this. Let me add, I want you to be very honest. Have you been in a relationship with a black male before? Absolutely not. Okay. I'd rather I would rather be lynched than ever even think of that. And I okay. say that with such kindness. Right. Well, you, that, okay, you're white supremacist. That's a white supremacist. Absolutely science. not. I just think that I can I... understand. No, no, no. I can understand a preference, but you're like, I'd rather be killed. Now that's white <laughs> supremacy. Okay. 
whatever that's, that's that not a preference is like yeah, because not- how you if that's the only thing that you're attracted to if i'm attracted to caucasians right caucasian right. males if i'm attracted to white men me thinking about being attracted or being with a black man has to make me feel some type of way. It has to make me kind of like suicidal ideation. It just, it's just. And, like and by the way, my brain's and by the way, and, and, by the way and, and by the way, I don't believe you. By the way, I don't, I don't believe. You, you don't believe me. No. The thing is, Tari, this believe. is the difference. You're around because this is I, don't believe. I see it happening. You're around the people, the white people who want to be black. Those are the areas you live in, and Ma'am, those women, I... they let themselves be victims and be baby mamas. But that is not how I roll. Ma'am, I don't believe you. You suspected white supremacist women are always looking for a chocolate soul pole on the low. I don't believe you at all. That's why you're calling. Isn't that a bit? That's a bit egotistical, don't you think? All these yeah. years, you guys went unwanted and then loved, and now to think unwanted. that apparently people always ma'am. want you is quite Un- the job. When, when did we ever? When were black men ever unwanted, ma'am? The, the only I'm talking about unwanted from me, from like a romantic point of view, from a love point of saying. view. You when, guys were wanted ma'am, for ma'am, uses when, to when, take cotton. When, when did you white women not want black males? Name the year. Not. When? If you're talking about in a romantic way, never. The, yeah, ma'am, stop it. Ma'am, stop it. The y'all, people we... that want the black men today are the ones that want to be black and they are victims themselves. They have let, they have let, cult, um, they have let ghetto culture get to them. They've let societal ways stop it, ma'am. Ma'am, let it, themselves it, conform this to is, it. This is what you tell the white supremacist males that you're trying to get some money from. Okay, this is what you tell Therese, them. I don't need money, ma'am. This, this is, money, she's ma'am, this bro. Is, the amount of white women that love me are unimaginable, fam. She's lying to you, and I'm from the UK as well, by the way. Yeah, shout out, Joker. Let me get, let me, let me talk to her. But yeah, 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 yeah. She's, on, she's all cap. She, this is all cap. This is that, Therese, ma'am. Therese. This, ma'am, this is what these white supremacist males like to hear. They like to hear all of that aggressive anti-blackness. Oh, I could, oh, I'd die before I ever be with a black man. You probably got a black dildo in your house right now, ma'am. That's disgusting, Tariq. Tariq, let me ask you a question. So you Go think ahead. that there isn't, a, there isn't a woman in existence that resides in England that just wants white men or just like is attracted to white men in general, and that wants but, a because if that were the case, you just, if that were the case, you would just do it. You wouldn't have to construct these weird anti-black ideologies ma'am that's to compensate for something you're trying to compensate for something ma'am and i think that you're yeah that's that's kind of a hustle you're a 19 year old white girl in the uk and this is what you tell the white supremacist males and by the way you might not even be white to be honest because you're over there in the uk truth be told You almost have a Somali vibe. There's a lot of these Somali East African women over there in the UK who talk as if they're white girls. And you might be one of them. That's what you really sound like. Tariq, Tariq, I feel quite offended right now because the Mm. fact that you think there isn't a white girl with a white accent in UK because we are being colonized by the black people, that is sickening. Yeah. That is disheartening that you feel that way. That it's rightfully yours. But I also agree with you. There are a lot of blacks people these days, less white people. If you go to schools, you see way more blacks or like people of color than you see white. But I'm half Finnish and half English, and I would I, never know, want to be black. I, might, I don't think, I mean, you might be East African. Yeah. Absolutely you might, not. Yeah. You, you, you might, I'm, I'm feeling a Somalian vibe there. You just. That's disgusting. Because you, you're going too hard to cosplay as a white girl. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's, a <laughs> white girl, listen. listen, listen, a white girl doesn't have to try that hard. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the UK. If you're in the UK, what are you trying to prove? You're in the whitest country ever. I wouldn't you're call this there. the whitest country ever. Like yeah. I just said, we are being taken over. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're not being taken over. You allow some black people to get over there. You're not being taken over. I mean, you no, live in a white no country. One allows. I think it's more so. I don't allow anything to be sure. If I, if yeah. I was given the chance to not allow those people here, I think I just would not allow them here. So. But yeah, I, I think you might be an East African, you know, with that with a British accent. And, I'm not. And trying to cosplay, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
But anyway, dear, like I said, I think that you um, low key have a fetish for black males and you just, you know, this is some kind of hustle that you got to tell white men in order to get a couple of dollars out of them. I think that that's I like. I don't need money, as I just said in New York a lot of times. Ma'am, this is a cosplaying thing that you get around white men and you play the little Nazi girlfriend. This is cosplaying that you're doing. Um, and you tell yourself this stuff because you, why would you be threatened? You know, you, you sound, uh, white supremacy is based off, um, you know, fear of genetic annihilation and you're in the UK already. And, you know, there's no real big threat. And I know there's some black people coming over there, but, and you're worried about our reparations here. So why is a white girl in a white country just sitting around concerning herself with black ghettos around the world so much for I think it's because it's starting to become a me problem because I'm being affected by it. Like I just said, environmentally, so? So? environmentally, okay, can I? Environmentally, there are black people taking over, there are people of color taking over. If you see the state of London as it is today, I think you would really understand. You walk into central London and you just see everybody there and you come across the rare white people that you just walk by but the majority of the people there have been over taken there. over by those people over there and Shari, can I ask you a question? Hold, hold, hold on okay. i'll let you ask in a second but over there you're familiar with brixton over there yes i am yeah. but that's not really a good place why isn't it brixton it's a clean place hard-working people over there a lot of culture there they got it popping it's a black area cool exactly. people over there that those are my ends, bro. You got it. Cool yes, people indeed. don't live there. Yes, and they do live there. I've been to Brixton, and I love the people over there. Hard because work you're black, hard. of course, you love the ambience that Brixton yes. gives off. Oh, yeah, they don't do anything to the white people. They're not harming you over there. So what are you talking about? Yeah, but it's just I feel like it just doesn't align with the type of culture I want to be around. That's right. Well, because they're not opinion. ratchet. Because they're not ratchet over there. Those are good, hardworking black people. They got their shops. They got their businesses over there. They're very hardworking people. It's Brixton very clean is over becoming there. Becoming ratchet. Oh uh, no! I, mean, it's I don't not. know how. I don't know when's the last time you went there, but Brixton is becoming ratchet. There's been stabbings there recently. It's been. It's like it's really not a really nice place as it once was. It's, it's still a cool place and the people are still cool um some of these other people these serial killers running around the white supremacist community that's the problem y'all running around there with no dental plan your teeth look like niblets um yeah you're all over the place with it um so yeah yeah you got to really look at the, the white supremacist community over there you really have to look at that man all right you know what's the problem, Tariq? One thing I don't like is hypocrites. And I right. feel as though everything you stand for and all the stances you have given to me today really contradicts with the fact that you have murder charges out of Alabama. Now, ma'am, now you're trolling. See, don't don't reduce yourself to trolling now. Because now you're going into white supremacist cop out mode. Because when white okay, supremacists, I'm not going to I'm just saying. Yeah, because now you're trolling. Now, when white supremacists lose an argument, then they just start getting goofy and then. I haven't lost this stuff. argument, and Tariq, you I have. Feel as and, and, and and also I, again, I don't think because now because now that you're proven that you're not a you're, you're arguing in bad faith, I really don't I'm, think you're white now. I really don't think you're white, and I because, that goes back oh, to my theory. Why is that? Because you only think your because, people could backstab, and you only think your ma'am, people could you're a wannabe go white. play dirty. That's ma'am, what you think, Tariq. You just showed yourself. Ma'am, you're a wannabe white supremacist. You're not even white. You just, right there, you showed your arguments are in bad faith. You're not even white. You're a musty so, tether. Ma'am, you are a musty right tether. Tariq, so you're saying you're I'm a musty be. tether? Yes. Okay, Tariq, listen, you're saying I'm a musty ma'am, tether for you're, you're, arguing ma'am. in bad faith. Tariq, yes. I are. just found out about those charges. Someone just put ma'am, it in my inbox. Stop. So I felt you're, rightful. You're, ma'am, you're trolling. Stop. I'm not trolling, Tariq. I stop. really come in true faith. I come no, in with good faith. Stop yes, it, I do. Okay, listen, Tariq. Let me just explain something uh, here, okay? Okay, you're ashamed of being East African. Listen, Tariq, I'm not I'm not ashamed of being... Oh, yeah, okay, ma'am, sure. So you just call me a tether? Because yeah, you just ma'am, can't believe... Me. You're ashamed of being East African, ma'am. You sit, you done sat up here pretending to be a white woman, and you're not even white. How listen, sad Tariq. is that, Tariq? Listen, yes, ma'am. you didn't sat here. You, you sat, you sat here and pretended to be a white woman all this time. 
uh, white women don't really talk like you're talking, especially a 19-year-old white woman. That's that's what was throwing everything off. 19-year-old white women don't talk like that. It's not even practical for them to be a hardcore anti-black racist at 19. White women don't get real racist until they get around 29. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, that type of shit kicks in much later, all right? So, ma'am, you, you've been sitting here cosplaying as a white woman. You're either some, uh, are you a Somalian, ma'am? Absolutely not. Tariq, I think the issue here is you're saying white women don't sound like this at 19. No, you they, really don't. Understand. they don't. Tariq, let me explain. You should really understand dialects. This is the dialect in some no, regions they... of West London, places you probably haven't been before because I don't know. There's not a lot of black people here. But Tariq, let me explain this. I want to go back to the point. I want to go back to the point. Ma'am, no, ma'am, Listen. your arguments are in bad faith. I don't, you're not a white woman, ma'am. Okay, okay, Tariq. Whatever, whatever makes you sleep at night. But let me get to my point, okay? Ma'am. Because why do you think I'm a why do you think I'm someone like you? Yeah, because you're I'm arguing man. and no, I, listen you're, to you're, I, now you're not a white woman. You're pretending you're a wannabe. Tariq, listen, listen, listen. Just the fact because, that you think, ma'am, just because you have a blonde divestment wig on doesn't make you a white woman. You're listen, not a white woman, ma'am. Okay, okay, Tariq. The you know what I hear? I, I, think, I listen. I hear camel hooves pattering in the background, ma'am. Okay. So let's not play this game. I hear the camel hooves, just a pitter patting in the background. Okay. You're sitting here cosplaying as a white woman. Okay, Tariq. The reason why you think I might be cosplaying or whatever is because you think only your people can argue in bad faith. Even though I didn't realize I was arguing in bad faith. You I are. Didn't know, I didn't know it was a sensitive spot for you because I just saw that right now. I just saw that right now. You're arguing in a bad faith. Everything you said is basically all cap. You're a Somalian woman, ma'am. Listen, you, Tariq. Ma ma'am, you're, you're, you're one of them Somalian women. And shout out to the Somalians. But you do have some Somalian um, self-haters out there, like this woman here, who tries to pretend <laughs> to be a woman. You're Tariq. not a white woman, Tariq. All right. Let me let, me let you go, ma'am, because now I, your arguments are horrible. Um, Juku, Joku, hop on, brother. Yes, Tariq. Bro, I appreciate you, bro. I was fucking livid on mute, bro. I just want to step in and just put her in her place, fam. Yes, indeed. Yeah, this woman, she's capping. She's all cap. But, um, yeah, well, how's everything in the UK, brother? No, it's good, bro, because, like, I was hearing you lot talk, right? And, like, I know her kind, lad. Like, they see me whipping around in the McLaren or the Lambo. I have both. It's fine. I'm helping their communities more than they are. And it's fucking, bro, they, they see me, right? They know they can't have me. They come to your end in Los Angeles, and what do they do? They go to Inglewood, of all places, lad. They go to Inglewood, and they riz up the first black man that just makes eye contact with them. It's absolute madness, bro. I'm not sure if you've seen on your ends, but that's just what I've seen. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Yeah, but it's all good. All right. I can understand nothing he was saying. Uh, let's get Colleen. Colleen, hop in, ma'am. Hi, Tariq. I appreciate you you letting me up. Listen, I just so I'm sitting here listening, and I, I was I was a bit dumbfounded. But she she said to you, "I can't stand hypocrites." I thought the nerve, the balls on this woman, because her page says, "Focus only on Christ, His path, His mission." I do everything right. for your name. I'm th whatever whatever her Christ is, it, it sure the hell isn't mine. I'm sure it's not a whole lot of people that. I mean, that was just that was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I just I found it really funny. So, anyways, thanks for having me up. I appreciate it. Thank you, dear. All right, all right. Let's get um my home girl, the foot model. Oh Lord, the foot queen. Oh. <laughs> Good hey, morning. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you, dear. Are, are you safe in the States? Or are you somewhere in Dubai? No, I'm, I'm in the UK. I've been in the oh, UK for a little minute. This girl be getting money, girl. You be all Yeah, over. I go to Paris this morning. I'm getting ready to go to Paris. <laughs> Man, I ain't mad at you, sister. What's on your mind? <laughs> so, first of all, like I said, I'm here in the UK now. I spend a lot of time over here um, in the UK, specifically London. Uh, this lady is capping. 
Okay. These yeah. people are living paycheck to paycheck, just like everybody else, homeless people all over the place. I don't know why she make it seem like just because she white means she got money. That's a freaking lie. Um, and then she said, oh, well, it's affecting me because London is being taken over by black people. That's not true. I will be, I, I, I have not met a black person since I've been here, not an American black person. So what they got to do with our reparations, them people right. invading over there are immigrants. What they got to do with us in the fact that she up in the black people's space this early in the fucking morning, it's 738 in the morning over here um she she got black people on her mind and let's be real clear her profile picture not even hers i know so I, you ain't gonna talk all that shit with your profile picture up there let's be for real for real real talk all right then thank you so much dear yeah like i said i think that i don't even think she's white to be honest after she started trolling on oh, this ain't a white girl and she's fucking yelling this nigga sound like one of these weird dudes with acne and a keloid behind his ear you know, with a janky hairline and mad because chicks don't want to date him. This real nerd incel energy. Like, this nigga don't get no pussy. I can tell it's all in your voice. You can hear it in your throat. That lack of pussy getting in your throat, nigga. And then, ladies and gentlemen, uh, y'all bear with me for a second. Let me. I'm already editing that nigga stuff out. He was deliberately doing a lot of cursing, and I don't. I'm not going to have that on the playback. So, nigga, you're not going to even get the shine you wanted. Let's get Mo. Mo in here. Hop on. What's up, Tariq? How are you? I'm good, Mo. What's on your mind? Uh, do you remember me from a couple months back? I was asking about, like, business and self-development. I kind of sort of do, but not really. I was doing, like, it's... the day trading and the podcast stuff. I don't know if that rings a bell. I can't remember, brother. But what's on your mind? Fair, bro. Yeah, I just want to say, like, yeah, I appreciate your time and everything. I've been applying to what you're saying, and I actually put a lot of my boys onto your work. Yeah. Um, I was in Los Angeles in April, but when I come back, bro, I'm gonna take you out for like the best steak Los Angeles can buy. It's go it's gonna be on me, my friend. And um, I think you can get a follow back, bro. My man. All right. Well, I'll look into that. I'll see if I can follow you back. I'll look at your page and see what's happening because I um. And I don't eat steak, and I don't really go out with niggas like that. But all right, all right, Vanessa, hop on, man. Vanessa, Miss Vanessa, waiting on Vanessa. What happened? Vanessa, turn your microphone on, ma'am. There we go. I've done it now. I'm new to this. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, I, I can hear you, so you're good to go right now. So, how do we play this game? How, um, how, how, how are people sending smiley faces and stuff like that? And what are we talking about? I've literally just hooked on. I went into Twitter, or X as it's now called, and mm -hmm. I had a little line across the top that said that something was going on. And I've come into it, but I have no idea what you're talking about. And, uh, yeah, so if, you, if you'd like to enlighten me, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, well, how about this? How about I get you off and you just listen in because I'm not doing a special tutoring section for somebody who's trying to learn Twitter space. All right, you're going to have to get one of your grandkids to teach you how to do that. I'm in the middle of a broadcast and I got a lot of people here. It's almost a thousand people here. So one of your grandkids, you sound like you're in the UK too, so wake your little grandkid up and give him some... Um, uh, a, a bagel with a little um, English muffin on it and um, have him explain. Give him a spot of tea and have him explain how this thing works. Okay, because I cannot do it for you at the moment, ma'am. All right. We've got a lot of folks in here still. All right. We got a lot of okay. We got what's this dude named Nazi Foo? Okay, hold. We got Patrick from SpongeBob in here. Hold on, Patrick from SpongeBob. Let's get Patrick from SpongeBob in here, real quick. Patrick, hop up real quick. Hey, Tariq. It's Patrick from the Bikini hey. Bottom. Hey, Patrick. How's everything down there, Bikini Bottom? Well, it's man? great, man. Look at my profile picture. I got the Supreme jacket on. Couldn't feel better. No, oh, man. Is SpongeBob okay? How's he doing? Well, here's the thing. All these Somalis from the UK, they're migrating to the Bikini Bottom, and now SpongeBob's without a job because Mr. Krabs is cheap, and he fired him. 
So y'all saying some of the Somalis then migrated down to Bikini Bottom too? Exactly. They stabbed too many people in the UK. They got kicked out. And the only place left is the Bikini Bottom. <laughs> but now I so, fear for my life to so, <laughs> so you saying that... So you're saying that even underwater, it, it's musty underwater? Even underwater, it, it smells got musty. like shit! It's bad enough Squidward lives next to me, and now all the Somalis are here too! My nostrils that don't exist are deteriorating! <laughs> all right. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. The drugs that's on the street right now, boy. Y'all drug dealers, please stop cutting the shit with fentanyl. Y'all got these niggas on one out of here, man. Lord. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Okay, all right. I'm a, y'all going to have me on here all night because now we done switched over to the UK ship. So the people in the UK are just waking up. And they're getting on early. All right, I ain't gonna be on here too much long, man. Let's y'all gonna have me on here all night. Um, Ichiru, Ichiru, I think that's your name. Ichiru, what's up, Ichiru? Let me just get one more good call in. Ichiru, hop on, brother. Um, come on, man. I'm trying to let you on. I'm trying to get one more good call in here after Patrick from SpongeBob. All right, a cheer you said, no, nah, I can't do it. All right. Let's get, um, shit. Ooh, we got a lot of folks in here. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get one more call before we go. Just one more call. Just one more. All right, let's get um, Godwell. All right, let's get Godwella, whatever your name is. All right, hop on, ma'am. All right, you turn your microphone on, unmute yourself. Can you hear there me? You yes, ma'am, how oh, are you? I'm very well. I, I'm from the UK, Tarek. First of all, yes. I just want to say, over the years, listening to you, following you, you are spot on mm -hmm. in many of your researches, the way you speak. If you recall me, you used to call me Jello Fries and I used to get oh. very offended. But mm. now I can't eat Jello Fries due to mm. medical issues. Uh oh, yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes. I, I, it's simply just an answer. You're spot on. It's true. What we need to do, this is my belief, just learning from you and many other great individuals who have turned around so many adverse issues, yes, to make money and educate at the same time. Yes. Keep on doing what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. And closing, I appreciate I... really important, listening to you talking about Brixton and you're all yes. the way in America. You are spot on. It's a unique mm -hmm. smelting pot where even the white middle classes have actually got tired of this fighting. And Brixton is growing to be such a role model for what can be done so keep on yes. pushing and keep on yes. giving us pure entertainment as you're dealing with the hate that is thrown at you and forgive me for two years ago <laughs> yep. thank you so much. i forgot what you did two years ago but it's cool but yeah shout out to brixton man i love the people over there in brixton good folks so don't let these people run that game Blacks of this so over there in the UK, man. The people in Brixton, hardworking folks. They got great businesses over Ooh, there. They they just bring in so much flavor, and that makes the London an interesting place. The black people bring a lot of the fl the flavor over there. Yellings, how are you, man? 
Yellings. Okay, Yellings, where you at, man? Oh, oh, are you talking? You. I'm talking to you, ma'am. Your your name is Yelling Stella. You forgot what your name is on your your profile. My name is uh, Stella Yelling Stella. Yes, thank you. Oh, Lord, no, Stella, where are you from, ma'am? I'm from. I'm Canadian, born okay. and raised. I'm Good. right off the west coast of. Okay, so what's on your mind, ma'am? Okay, ma'am. Is that Canadian connection on your phone not popping? What's going on? Okay. Yeah, yellings. Yellings, you okay? Okay, we get her off because her phone fell down somewhere and I think a moose stepped on it. Frankie V, hop on Frankie V. All right. Frankie V, what's up, brother? Waiting on Frankie V. All right, while we're waiting on Frankie V, we're going to get Trey in here. All right, Trey? Uh, yeah, how's, how's it going, Trey? How's it going? What's up, what's up Trey? Your, your phone is extremely janky, but what's on, what's going on with you, bro? Oh, um, is, is my microphone better now? Is, is it better now? Much better. Yeah. Much guess. better. Go ahead. Um, yeah, how's it going, Tariq? Um, I just wanted to say um, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona right now. Okay. Um, yeah, I need to give some advice real quick. So, um, like I said, I'm in Scottsdale. Um, I just turned 20 um, about last year. And I'm dating this foundational black American. But the thing is, she's um, – um, I need advice because I'm not really, like, around black people too much and, and uh, FBA. So I do need some advice. Okay. Now, first of all, and you're not dating a girl. That's where you lost me. When you said you were dating a girl, that's I knew it was all cap. Okay. Um, that 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 you, your trolling fell flat right there. Um, right. I've dated a. Um, you may come. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 yeah but, you're not. But you 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 gave up your your troll intel. With, um, um, yeah, you gave it up right yeah, there. Three, you um, were, can I have your bussy? Um, your bussy. Um, is that, a, is that like a moist pussy language you're using? Is that a pussy Morse code? Yeah. Are, are, are you I'm trying to, are you opening up? I'm trying to summon your are you, are, are you opening up your butt cheeks and making them speak and you whistling with your booty hole? What kind of sound was that, sir? I've never heard a sound like that before, sir. Um, you guys are really freaky. There's a lot of freaky stuff going on. You opened up your butt cheeks and you made your bussy whistle. And I've never heard that before, sir. Yeah, there's so many talented people out here. Everybody's so creative. All right. Yeah, I anyway, my Trey. Speak. Okay, Trey. All right. I love you, you go. I love you. Okay, there you go. Everybody's so creative. Okay. All right. Man. Okay. Boy, these people in here tonight are doing the most. I've never heard sounds like that before. Okay, let's go. Ariella. All right. Let's get Ariella in here. Well, that was a her troll page and everything. All right. I remember this guy here, the King Flipper. It wasn't that guy the rapper. I remember this guy. I don't know if I'm gonna have you on, but I think this guy was like a um, wait, King. Were you, were you the rapper? Hold on, get off. I might as well have you on because everybody else is crazy to catch it. King Flipper, weren't you the rapper? King Flipper. Hey, Tariq Nasheed, how are you doing, brother? I'm good. And you were the rapper guy, right? Yeah, we had a great conversation last time I was in here. So yeah. Just this Moroccan rapper, yes, yes, yes. What's on your mind, man? How you been? I'm cool, man. I did not uh, watch your spaces for a long time. I don't know where you was or what you have doing for the last couple of months. But now I noticed your spaces, so I thought I would jump in and say hi. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do my spaces off and on. You know, I'm pretty consistent with them. I do them once a week or whatever. But how you been, man? You still rhyming? Yeah, I'm still rhyming. I, mean, I just came back from Morocco on holidays and things like that. Very really great. Very really great time this yes, summer. Indeed. Yeah, man. There it is. My man. Well, good luck to you in your rap career, brother. Shout out to you and um, all your folks. Um, his album is called Get Baklava or Die Trying. That's the name of the album. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yes, Get Baklava or Die Trying. That's 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 gonna be a hot album, brother. Uh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, you know, this is enough is enough. Enough is just too much going on here. Too much going on. Listen, y'all go to um, rootworkstyle.com to get some of that rootwork deodorant. Real good stuff, man. It's a hit. Everybody likes the rootwork deodorant. Man. We are selling out of this stuff like crazy. Um, you guys are really going to love it. It's foundational Black American themed. Rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. Um. And also go to American-Maroon.com to get the movie American Maroon. Also, I man, y'all need to get the, the Buck Breaking movie. If you don't have it, get the Buck Breaking DVD at BuckBreakingMovie.com. BuckBreakingMovie.com. Because we mentioned Buck Breaking a few times tonight. But anyway, man, I think we had a real interesting conversation tonight, man. Very interesting. And anyway, man, you guys be good. Puppy Akute, Lola Vuve to the family. Peace.